So get a cup of tea, get a snack and just relax and let's get on with it. So growing up, um, I never really got influenced by my parents like that. They did send me to Madrasa and they got me tutoring and things like that for Arabic lessons. But they never, like my mum never wore the hijab. My dad didn't have a long beard or anything like that. Like their physical appearance wasn't there. I did in my head that I wanted to wear hijab one day, inshallah. That's how I was in my mind. But the school and the friends that I had at that time, nobody... Firstly, I didn't have any Muslim friends and I didn't go to a Muslim school, nowhere close to it, mixed school and I didn't have the best of like friends, to be honest. Um, most of them were really bad influencing people um, and yeah, friends and they're not bad because I never saw bad in anybody. I never saw their actions to be bad or anything, but if you, if I think about it now, I'm like thinking I should have... I should have done something about it. But most of my friends got excluded from school. By the time I was in year 10, I had none of my friends. Like, none of my friends. So, I had to make new set of friends. And they were better. Like, they were better pupils and stuff. So, I concentrated on my GCSEs. But again, Islam wasn't anywhere close in my mind. Then, um, secondary when I came into college and in college i had three hijabi friends first time ever having muslim who muslim friends who looked muslim that i can identify that no they're muslims now and then when i was 19 roughly about 19 when i'm on my second college um doing a different subject um i used to work in mcdonald's so <laughs> that's another thing i used to work in mcdonald's um, from the age of 16 part-time so I was so I used to work in McDonald's from the age of 16 part-time and then full-time when the holidays came and I used to eat you know Big Macs and quarter pounders and chicken sandwiches and stuff like that um, and then there was a manager there a new manager that came when I was 19 and he would also say um, you know what you're eating is ha is haram is haram um it's not halal and i used to say no it's fine it's not pork and he said no there's there, there's no you know it's halal or it's not halal it's it's that simple and that kind of made me think you know like you know he kind of like explained it to me a little bit and stuff and that made me kind of think okay that makes sense and then I can't exactly remember what he said, but I know that kind of like stuck to me. And then I kind of decided around that time, a few months later, he spoke to me that I'm just going to eat halal meat, like just halal meat. And it wasn't even... Okay, so now at this point, I've started to transition. For me, that was like the first step myself, um, just eating halal meat. So that was the first thing. And then the next couple of years... Um, I, you know, I didn't <clears throat> still follow Islam. I was, um, I had a boyfriend. I had, um, friends that would still influence me in terms of like taking me clubbing, drinking, um, things like that. <sighs> you know, just basically it wasn't the right place for me. Um, and no one stopped me, like, no one stopped me. They just let me do my thing. Um, at this point, my mum's a single mum. And so I didn't have any um, influence by any male members in my family. Um, so, yeah, so basically that's that. Um, they let me just get on with what I wanted to get on with. And, but when I was doing those things, like when I was going clubbing, when I was in a haram relationship I, I felt so uncomfortable I felt that I was wearing a mask and I was struggling um within myself to try to fit into the society so much like to be accepted in the society and I would just do like I'll just follow like a sheep like just follow them and 
it just made me like really unhappy to be honest because I was just so like who am I doing this for like who am I doing it for just people that are going to come and go in my life and never going to be stable so I just kept on pondering about things like this majority of the time but I never told anybody so um during this time I also started to collect hijabs and abayas and stuff and kept them hidden away kind of thing and then um a couple of years after you know I changed into halal meat too and then that Monday when I went to work I was like I'm gonna wear the hijab and a bayah. so I wore that to work and all the parents and all the staff just stared stared and didn't say anything I would say only like two parents asked me what's the change about and I just told them that I just wanted to embrace my religion and they were fine with that um my mum thought it was probably a phase stuff for love but she did she thought it was a phrase so I did lose a uh, quite a few friends because of my transition to Islam um which is fine I mean if they weren't meant to be in your life then you let them go for the sake of Allah like you 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 just have to let them go because at the end of the day they're not that important um your religion is your faith is so I did it for that reason I just I didn't fight it I just let it happen um because I didn't really want to I just felt I couldn't please them anymore because I couldn't go clubbing I couldn't go drinking I couldn't you know mix with men and stuff like that so I just thought maybe for the best it is good that I don't have any non-muslim friends who cannot accept me for who I am and for them, that was a, a transition they just couldn't accept because they knew me the way they knew me before. And then changing to a more stricter lifestyle, um, they just couldn't get their head around it. So it was fine. It was fine. It was cool with, I was cool with that. It was fine. Um, so now the next two years after wearing the hijab, um, I was happy. Alhamdulillah, I was so happy with everything. And, um, uh, and I was practicing more. I had a Arabic teacher. She was teaching me about Islam. I was doing a little bit of research myself, watching lectures and things. I was embracing more and more things. My Islamic teacher said about the eyebrow thing is forbidden because your prayers will not be accepted. And immediately I stopped. It was quite hard, actually. I'm not going to lie to you because within myself, I, it 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 was difficult because I may not do makeup at all to work but if I did my eyebrows I'll be happy because I, I feel like I, I look decent I look human <laughs> so not doing the eyebrow was a bit of a task but again you have to think what is the purpose if you if you cannot if your prayers cannot be accepted is there any point of you doing what you're doing like for me it was like no I want to be a practicing Muslim a good Muslim a Muslim that m my children can be proud of my husband can be proud of my family can be proud of I want to be good in every way if I can strive to be um, a good Muslim I, because my ultimate goal is to go to Jannah and I'm sure everyone else as well so I had to obey the rules so I did I obeyed the rules and then okay so after that um uh what was it so I wore the hijab for about 18 months two years no so it was about two nearly two years that I had the about 18 months I had the hijab on and stuff and then I wanted to settle down I wanted to settle down so I was looking for a practicing Muslim, but not too religious because I was still learning. So I needed somebody who can help me or I can help them or we help each other. I didn't want someone so advanced that I felt stupid. So um, I was looking, you know, my mum didn't really know anybody. And so I went on these, um, you know, these online Muslim 
marriage sites and stuff. And funny, funny, funny how things happen because I found my husband on there who I actually knew from secondary school, who wasn't a Muslim at that time. So that's another story altogether. But um, yes, I got married and then um, we were happy. I was still hijabi. He, we were like bouncing off each other when it came to religion and stuff. But he did exceed like quicker because he absorbs things so quick, um, quicker than me. And because he's a revert, his love for Islam, I feel that is greater than mine. Like his love for Islam is far greater than mine in, in, in every way, because I think I took Islam for granted, whereas he never had Islam. He, Islam he never had it so when he got it he he keeps it treasured and he um he loves it he loves it so much um mashallah um yeah so then we had then I got pregnant with Khadija and um he kind of said to me he kind of said to me that he would like me to wear niqab and I was like I was like step back a little bit I'm not too sure about this um I d I've never seen myself wearing the, the niqab and stuff um I don't know how c comfortable I'll feel blah 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 and then he was like no it's you know he explained to me everything and he showed me evidence and he showed me um you know the the rewards that you would get and you know try to entice me basically he tried to entice me buy me a couple of niqabs and i'll give it a go and i wore it out with him at first i'm not going to lie to you the niqab that he got me was horrible that can't completely put me off then he got me a different kind of niqab which i didn't even know how to even put on and then there was another this is the niqabs that i wear now they're pretty long Ugh pretty long and I got them from Zum Zums in wood green if you're wondering four pounds and they were just like perfect the material was really nice and soft and flowy and they were very long it covered the chest area um so it was just like it was just brilliant I loved it and um I put it on and with him I was fine but then I started to notice that I started to get a lot of abuse and that kind of put me off a little bit so I did have a mo few times when I would put it on take it off put it on take it off because of um the constant abuse that you get not physical abuse but you get the verbal abuse and Khadija was growing up as well and I would still get it like bomb squad and ISIS bride and um just nonsense things and then um <clears throat> But my husband said, every time that you get abused and you stay strong, you get rewarded. Every time, any hardship that you go through, because this is nothing compared to all our prophets, what they went through and their wives, what they went through. So, you're, you know, this is just a temporary place for you. So my husband would like really encourage me. And I think... That really helped me embrace the niqab more when I had a supporting husband. Again, my family were fine with it as well. They thought it was a phase. And I think they found it really uncomfortable, maybe at first. But Alhamdulillah, they have no problem with me wearing the niqab whatsoever. They're very supportive. My husband is very supportive as well. Um, at work, um, they're very supportive. So I've got now good support system in my life where um niqab is not an issue there are places i don't go on my own without my husband or my family or my friends only because i just feel really uncomfortable in those areas but apart from that the niqab itself um it was a transition but i think what made it easier was i had a very good support system around me and the acceptance from my loved ones really did help me to embrace Islam and take the next step in being modest. Um, and please like, subscribe and share the video.
so growing up um i decided yes khadija mama doing a video <laughs> Mama doing a video. Don't don't do a video. One video. Oh, don't don't put your face there. Don't put your face. What video? <laughs> no, no. Now, okay, because Mama doing a video. That's why I don't do videos, guys. Because <laughs> Khadija takes all my time. <laughs> Khadija, Mama doing video. Okay, can I start now? Or do you want to take your toys in the other room? Yes, sir. Okay. 